Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about lighting scenes. In this case we're looking particularly at low poly scenes, but it could translate to any scene. And I'm only talking about external scenes, so scenes that are outside. I'm using Blender here, but this will work in any 3D software. And if you would like more courses on Blender or other things related to 3D, then go to gabbit.co.uk where we've got tutorials right through from beginner to advanced levels. And all the courses are free. Right, so here's my low poly scene at the moment. I've tried to get a bit of story in this, so we've got a fisherman there, we've got seagulls that are after his fish, which may be in this basket here if he's caught any, and his house is in the background with his log cabin and logs for burning firewood. Obviously it's a cold wintry day, so he's got a big coat on, but there's a fair bit more I could do with this scene. But for now what I want to show is what we can do with the lighting, particularly when we're trying to light for different times of day or at night. Make sure you're using the filmic color management settings so we go to the scene tab which is the third in and then down here to view we change it to filmic and I'm using just a base contrast so let's start off by looking at the scene first so you can see here's my big scene here there's the mountains in the background there's my little house if I zoom right in you can see there's my person sitting on the edge of the lake or whatever this might be you can see my seagulls there or again whatever bird they might be and I've got four lights going around my scene. So that may sound silly because you only have one light from the sun or the moon at night, but these are working as bounce lights. So when the light comes in from the sun or moon, it will come down, but it will bounce off all the snow and the trees and the wood and everything like that. So we will have reflected light from the different objects. So if I'm using a backlight in this case, so this is the back of the scene, so coming from here, this would be much more intense than these bounce lights around here. And also the shadow size would be quite low, so this would be giving off shadows, and these ones would be quite high, so they'd have very soft shadows. Let's first look at our HDRI. So I'm in the node editor, and I've clicked on the world tab, and I've put in an HDRI or an environment texture. You can get there by going shift A, texture, environment texture. And if I open that up, and let's see what I've got available. So to start off with, it's a good idea to go for a very sort of grey looking one, like this one here, for example, just to see the colours in your scene and how they're reacting with each other. Now, as I said, I think this has got a fair way to go in those terms. It's worth pointing out that if you know that something's going to be way in the distance, it's a good idea to make that slightly lighter, and things in the foreground should be slightly darker and more saturated in colour which I've kind of done here. You can see this is more saturated than the mountains in the background, even though they're the same earthy color. So that's with a very gray HDRI. Let's try a different one. Pressing on this icon will give you the pictures. Let's go for a, a very yellowy looking one like this one here. And we can see instantly that that's given it a more yellowy tone and a touch red. What I'm going to do is hide my light so they don't influence it. Hide all of those. And let's put the strength up of this HDRI to about five. Now, of course, we're getting some of the reflection in there. We can turn that off, or we can move our HDRI around with Control T if you've got Node Wrangler installed, and you can rotate it around until you get the look you want. And really, we need the sun in the background if I want the sun there. So already that's looking fairly sort of evening-ish, like it's got a ready glow. But what if we wanted a nighttime scene? Well, first we'd have to change our HDRI to a nighttime looking HDRI. Perhaps something like this, although you could probably find an even more dark blue one that would be more suitable. And instantly you can see it looks like night. Let's see if we can do a bit more with the lights in the scene. So if I press Alt H to unhide all my lights, I think for a nighttime scene, well, that's if the moonlight is coming from this angle down here. So I'll just have one light for now and hide the rest. So I'm just pressing H to hide. And there's my one light. And for moonlight, you generally have one very hard light. So this should have very hard shadows. So we bring this all the way down, very low. We can bring the intensity up a bit. And there you can see the shadows. If we go to top view, then we can rotate it in the right angle. So it's going across my fisherman this way. And it depends what time of night, but However high you want the moon is how you'd rotate it in terms of the angle of the light. So this is going to be fairly low and it's coming shooting across here. 
I'll turn the strength of my HDRI down so that it's a bit darker in the scene to about 2 and I'll change the color so it's very bluey. And that's the best way to light a night scene. It would be a good idea to have a few lights maybe coming from the house and coming from his sort of pier or jetty and he can be a night fisherman then. The important thing is that I haven't taken away all the light. I've actually put in quite a lot of light. The HDRI is at 2, this light is near 4, so there's quite a lot of light in the scene. But because it's a bluey colour, we associate this with night time. It's worth pointing out as well I've gone for a transparent background because I'll probably put a picture in there afterwards in something like Photoshop. So I could do a night sky at this point. OK, so what about early morning perhaps? Well, let's change our HDRI. So early morning we tend to have bluey colours, but they're a bit brighter than night time. So I'll go for this one perhaps. OK, so it looks very bright now. So we might have to decrease that. And it's looking pretty close, but perhaps we can change this colour so it's slightly less blue. And because we've got these long shadows, it's looking a bit like it's early morning. Now occasionally you do get sort of reddy colours in the morning. So we could come along a bit more purpley. And we can just experiment and see what influence this has. Let's put that back a bit. If we want our shadows to have more influence, then we bring down the HDRI further. As you can see there, the shadows are much brighter. And now I'm just experimenting. I've turned my HDRI down and I'm turning this one up. Just so we can see a few longer shadows. I think I'll give that a bit more of a bluey tone. And there we go, it looks quite morningy now. You can even change to different seasons. Autumnal light tends to be quite low in the sky. So we can go a bit yellowy there. And it looks fairly autumny now. What about the evening then? Let's go for a nice reddy colour for the evening. And now we've got these nice crisp long shadows and it looks like the evening time. Now experimenting with the angle of light is going to be important as well. So in this case, it's coming from the side here. Our fisherman is there and the house is there. If I turn this with R then Z and just rotate it round and see what happens, we can experiment with different lighting effects and maybe I can have the sun coming from directly behind him. A very different look against the mountains there as you can see. Upon looking at this a bit more I think the mountains are a bit high so maybe I need to bring those down at some point. Let's try the other direction that's coming across from this side now. And I quite like that because we've got the sun on the house here, on the side of his jacket here and I really like that one. That looks a lot better I think. I'm getting lots of fireflies because of the reflection of the pond but I'll turn the denoising on to sort that out later. So I'm quite happy with this and let's bring back our other light with Alt H. Now suddenly you can see that softened the shadows and brightened everything up and that might be a bit too much so we may have to go into these lights and experiment with the power that we want these at. I'm going to turn them all down to 0.1 for now and I'm going to experiment with this one and have sort of a bluey light coming in this way. So let's have a look at that. So red's over here, so we've got sort of reddy, yellowy colours for our evening scene. And I want to experiment with a sort of blue bounce light. And I'm going to turn that up as if the night's encroaching slightly. And you can get some very interesting effects with different coloured lights in your scene. And that does actually happen, that you get a really strong sun, but when you look away from the sun, it's very blue sky. That often happens in the morning. So can you experiment with lights and bounce lights and different lights coming into your scene with different colours? I quite like that. I'm going to go even more saturated blue and see what that looks like. You can see that's too far, but it's an interesting look, isn't it? Perhaps if I turn the brightness down to about 0.5, it's looking quite interesting now. So I'm going to play around with this a bit and have some fun. Maybe even change the colours of these backlights as well, just to see what different effects I can achieve. So try and have a go with that in your landscapes. Remember to start with every light being pure white and your HDR being sort of very grey or having very little saturation. And then once you're happy with your colours in your scene and the direction of lights, then you can start changing the colours of them. Okay, hope that helps.